uh, some, yeah, he, uh, he's working. Yeah, just go back on the same way, sir. Uh. Okay, it is live now. It is live now. The say. only one that's on there now should be live. The, the only one that's on there should be live. So However just, uh, buffery it might be. So if you have... Okay, am I on there? Yeah. But that's fine. Do you see me? Okay, we're set. Can you make sure the rest are on? And if, if the rest aren't on, tell them to let you know. It should be live and search for Sister Andrew's wedding for 18 points. Yeah, are we going? Bring that camera photo and figure out. Okay, Adam, you're Adam. You're Glad to be here. Welcome to the Lord, we pause before you again this day. We give you thanks for this beautiful day. We give you thanks that we can come together and that we can worship you in this way. We ask that you would be further with us. We ask that you would blessing would rest on the marriage, the couple that gets married. And we ask that you would be with the ones that pray to you. And we give you thanks for instituting it the way you did. And we ask that you would be Father with us this day, and we give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory for your mercies up to this point. And we ask that you would be Father with us, lead us, direct us, and that we can do the things that bring honor and glory to you. We give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory. We ask and pray in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Greet each one of you in Jesus' worthy, precious name this morning. God, in His sovereignty, planned this day. And I believe this way. <laughs> we didn't necessarily plan it this way until just recently. But I do believe God does realize and recognize that... that um, we as his children 
we want to still, in spite of circumstances that we face, we still want to obey his word. And we want to um, do the things which he calls his children to do. So this morning we're gathered here to have a wedding. Brother Clifford, Sister Ruth, God bless you today. We wish you God's blessing, God's grace, God's direction, and God's mercy on your marriage. The Bible tells us that whoso findeth the wife findeth a good thing. And Clifford, I'm convinced you have found a very good thing. More than just a thing. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Don't want to take a lot of time here this morning, um, but I do think we need to just remind ourselves again what the scripture says concerning marriage, what uh, what God's plan is. Marriage is something that God instituted way back, uh, even before sin came to the world. So marriage is God ordained. God directed, God led, and it should be. Now, as God's children, I believe our marriages can be so much more than people who do not know God. But yet, marriage is a creation principle. Ephesians 5, read some verses there. Um, verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Scripture here is a picture of marriage, directions for marriage, but it's also a picture of the relationship between Christ and the church. We notice that there's just several things from the scripture I want to bring out. We notice the headship order. Verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church and he is a savior of the body. As I mentioned before, this is a creation principle. Uh, God created Adam first, and then he created woman. <clears throat> first Corinthians 11, 8 and 9 says, For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Remember, God seen Adam there, and he said, I will make, make and help meet for him. And so, Woman was created for man, and I believe that's that's why the, God, the headship order is the way that it is. First Timothy 2 says, Let the women learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. And so remember that headship order that God calls you to in your marriage. And it is not that one is much more valuable in God's sight than the other. Not at all. As far as salvation is concerned, your, your relationship with God, you're equal. Uh, in fact, Clifford, I think you will find out that many times probably your wife is a little more sensitive to God's direction, God's leading than, than what you are. Not saying that you aren't, but it's just the way God made us. And so, so in God's eyes, as far as our relationship with God, we're equal. But there's a headship order. That God has ordained, and if we stay in that, God will bless that union uh, in, in that way. <clears throat> the Bible calls the husbands to love and to cherish. 
uh, remember, rem uh, follow Christ's example in, in, that he has towards the church, the love he shows toward the church. Verse 25 tells us that husbands love your wives. You are to love Ruth as Christ loves. And how does Christ love? He gave himself for the church. He gave his life. You need to love her. You need to give yourself for her, for her good, for her spiritual good, for her physical good, and, and all of that. <clears throat> you need to love her as Christ loves. And verse 28 tells us tells us as well that husbands need to well love their wives as their own bodies. Love Ruth as an extension of yourself. Remember, because now two will be made one flesh. So love her as you love yourself. In fact, the Bible tells us later on that no man, in verse um, 29, no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the Lord of the church. You take care of yourself even naturally. Love her as you would love yourself. And that nourisheth means to bring it to maturity. Clifford, I think you as the head of the home, you need to take the responsibility of, of helping your, your love, your relationship to come to its maturity. Um, when there's selfishness or when there's some of those things coming to marriage, I don't believe the marriage comes to maturity that God wants it to. So you need to nourish your relationship with God and with your spouse and bring it to the maturity and also then cherish this means has a thought of to be warm or to brood over like a chicken broods over her chicks there again a picture of what christ does for the church i remember as a young boy an older minister would tell the story of a chicken house that had burned down and they found this one chicken that was there in the ashes charred black dead but when they picked the chicken up there was chicks run out from underneath. You need to love her in such a way that you're willing, yes, your life, if that's what God calls you to. <clears throat> love her as you love yourself. <clears throat> Sister Ruth, in this scripture also, I'm sorry, one more scripture there for Brother uh, Clifford. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Again, recognize your responsibility to your wife dwell with her according to knowledge understand her maybe you won't 100 percent, but you will learn and you will try and with time you will it's amazing after a marriage of many years many times the same thoughts are running through both people's heads one makes a remark well i was just thinking about that why did you but that's 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 god's plan i believe that we we try to under, come to an understanding of each other in, in, in every way, whatever way that may be. <clears throat> Sister Ruth, the scripture also here calls the, the uh, principle of submission. Uh, verse 22, you need to submit to him as you submit to the Lord. When God called you, uh, you gave your heart and life to Jesus. You submitted your life to him. You're following him. You're, you have made him Lord of your life. Uh, that same attitude of submission needs to be there with your husband as well. <clears throat> Verse 24, you are to submit, to be subject to him as the church is subject to Christ. Uh, Christ is the head of the church. He is the one who has laid out how the church should should function, how the church should operation operate, how how many different facets of the church should, should, should be done. And, and in the same way, Sister Ruth, you need to... Um, Yes, be subject to Clifford. When it comes down to it, he's responsible. And because of that responsibility that he carries, he then has the authority to, to make the final decisions. And I trust that he will not do that without really talking to you and hearing you out. But still, when it comes down to it, he needs to make that decision. <clears throat> Colossians 3.18, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as is fit in the Lord. Again, it's God's plan. He ordained it, and it's beautiful when everyone is in their place the way God made it. <clears throat>
And verse 33 of our scripture text tells us that the wife see that she reverence her husband. Your husband is human. He is he's a man. He's prone to make mistakes. He's prone to, to sin. But, in another, but on the other hand, he is the one God has ordained to be your head, to be your leader. And so you need to respect him. That reverence actually has a thought of standing in awe of. Uh, cultivate that. Like I said, we don't go by feelings. We go by commitment. But yet, cultivate a feeling of respect and awe towards your husband. Clifford, order your life, live your life in such a way that she can easily do that. It, it, it's, it's two ways, but the wife should reverence her husband. He even talks about how uh, Sarah called Abraham Lord, that kind of respect that she had to him. <clears throat> now, it's not the capital L, not the Lord in heaven, but as one who, who has authority over her. <clears throat> and so God bless you. In, in all of that as you go through that. One more principle I think we need to talk about. Um, <clears throat> we find in Mark. Mark chapter 10. Here's Jesus' own words concerning a question that the Pharisees had for him. It says, but from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. There needs to be a leaving and a, and a cleaving. Clifford, I believe you have high respect, high regard for your parents, and that's good. But you need to leave. At this point, from this day forward, you're concentrating on leaving and cleaving. Same way with you, with you, Ruth. I'm sure you have, I know you have high respect for your parents, high regard for them. You appreciate them, but you need to now leave. And you too need to cleave to each other. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. To leave means to but the Greek word for leave means to abandon. Now, you're not just going to write your parents off. But there needs to be something physically happening that, happening that you leave their home. It's not good for you as a couple, I don't believe, to live right in with your parents, either one, at least for an extended period of time. There needs to be a leaving. The Hebrew word for leave means to relinquish or to loosen. As we say, the apron strings need to be cut. And that means that they're cut and they're loosened and you can leave. Cleaving is even, I believe, even much, well, I guess I shouldn't say much more important, but there's, there's a real value. It must be that you cleave to each other. And, and the Greek word for, for cleave is to glue, just like glue. And the Hebrew word is basically the same, to be joined, to cling, or adhere to. Just like you would glue two pieces of wood together. They tell me if you try to break that piece of wood, most likely it will not break where the glue is. It will break somewhere else. As you leave and as you cleave, you will find that God can bless your marriage. And that's our wish for you. That's your parents' wish for you, that God would bless your marriage. God would lead you and direct you. And so I believe that as, as you go forth from this day, remember, God has an order. Clifford, you are to love. Ruth, you are to submit. And you are to leave. And you are to cleave. God give you grace as you do this. There's a lot of things that you haven't experienced yet. A lot of new things you'll be experiencing in marriage. And yet it is God's plan. And follow God's direction. Follow God's will. And God will bless you in that.
Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is true. It's forever settled in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for the institution of marriage. We thank you, Lord, that you saw fit. You saw the need to create a woman that would be an helpmeet for Adam. And Lord, you've done this many, many times since. We believe, Lord, today that you have created Sister Ruth for Brother Clifford. It is in your plan, your will. And so today, as we are here together, we pray that you would be here with us as we go through the marriage vows. Pray your will could be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved friends, it has now been made fully known that Brother Clifford, Missley, and Sister Ruth Lapp have agreed to enter into the bonds of matrimony, and no reason is given to prevent them, so if it's still your desire, you may come forward. Brother Clifford and Sister Ruth, we rejoice with you today in God's direction in your lives. As you enter marriage, you will discover in each other that you are very human, and living together as husband and wife will require the exercise of patience and forbearance. Do not let a day pass with any misunderstandings between you. Be sincerely honest and courteously frank with each other. Read your Bible and pray together. Establish at once your family altar, which will deepen your love for Christ and for each other. Look beyond yourselves and live for Christ and his kingdom. Brother Clifford standing by your side as she is to be your wedded wife. In your character and conduct lies her happiness. She will look to you for strength and leadership. She has given you one of the most sacred things under heaven, namely a woman's life and love. Your continued exercise of love and courtesy will keep her one to your heart. Sister Ruth standing by your side as he is to be your wedded husband. In your life and in your love and life lies his inspiration and help. He is going to look to you for encouragement, cheerfulness, and confidence. May your life be the inspiration and love, and your love the protection that he needs as a Christian husband. Brother Clifford, do you believe that marriage is an ordinance instituted of God and confirmed and sanctioned by Jesus Christ, and that you must therefore enter in, upon it in the fear of God? I do. Sister Ruth, do you believe that marriage is an institution, is an ordinance instituted of God, and confirmed and sanctioned by Jesus Christ, and that you must therefore enter upon it in the fear of God? I do. Brother Clifford, do you confess and declare that you are unmarried and free from any other marriage relations and engagements whatsoever? I am. Sister Ruth, do you confess and declare that you are unmarried and free from any other marriage relations and engagements whatsoever. I am. Brother Clifford, will you, in the presence of God and these witnesses, take Ruth, the sister by your side, to be your wedded wife? Will you love and cherish her, provide and care for her in health, in sickness, in prosperity and adversity? Exercise patience, kindness and forbearance toward her, Live with her in peace as becometh a faithful Christian husband, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only unto her as long as you both shall live. I will. Sister Ruth, will you, in the presence of God and these witnesses, take Clifford, the brother by your side, to be your wedded husband? Will you love him and cherish him in health and in sickness, in prosperity and in adversity? Share with him the joys and sorrows of life, Exercise patience, kindness, and forbearance toward him. Submit to him in peace as becometh a faithful Christian wife, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only unto him as long as you both shall live. I will. Now join your right hand. 
upon the authority of the Word of God, according to the laws of the state, and in the presence of God and these witnesses, I now pronounce you husband and wife. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, bless this union abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Go forth in peace. Go forth as husband and wife. Live in peace. Fear God. Keep his commandments. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, as we stand here before you, as these vows were just pronounced, Lord, you heard them. We commit this couple to you. Bless this marriage abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray that as they go from here, that they might be vessels that would be for your glory and your purposes. That they might show a lost and dying world around us what a true, godly marriage is to be like. So, Lord, we commit them to you for your glory and your praise. Bless them and abundantly. And we do pray, Lord, that if it's your will, that there be children born to this union, that you would grant them that as well. We commit it all to you. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We rejoice in God's direction. Malins and Leroy. Leroy, God bless you as you Encourage them as you help them is through this new phase in their life. Stand behind them, support them, but on the other hand, let them go establish their own home. Shall we have a benediction prayer? Mela, would you want to lead us in some prayer, please? Father, we do thank you this afternoon for your goodness to us. We thank you for your faithfulness. And as we part here, might your blessing rest upon us. Pray your blessing upon Clifford and Ruth mm -hmm. as they begin their new life, that uh, they might be faithful to you, faithful to the vows that they have made here this morning. We thank you for being with us here. We thank you for your presence. Continue to be with each one as we go our separate ways. Bless this day as we further go about our duties that uh, your name might be glorified. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.